What is up guys, welcome to another video. In this episode, we're gonna be giving our character an AI a way of blocking attacks. So this tutorial is actually part of an AI tutorial series. So for anyone who's not been following along with this series, you'll only be able to set up your character to use block animations. As after that, we're gonna be working with the AI we created in the past few episodes. So if you wanna follow the tutorial series from the start, I'll leave a link in the description to the first tutorial you need to watch. Or if you want to learn how you can implement a blocking system into your character, feel free to stick around for that. Before we jump into that though, a quick thank you to my Patreons for supporting me. And Max, my friend, welcome to the team. Thanks for joining. Okay, let's get into this. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is import a shield block and stun animation into your project. If you have your own blocking and stun animation, feel free to use them. But there's a link in the description to download the ones I've prepared for you. Make sure you select your pre-existing skeletal mesh when importing. When imported, we're going to right click our stun animation and convert it into a montage so we can call upon it in a blueprint. Now jump into our third person blueprint. If you don't already have a shield attached to your character, you'll need to do that via a socket and attach to component node. I'll leave a link in the description to my tutorial that shows you how to do this. Now let's create a bool variable and call it blocking. Bring in a key to block with. I'm going to use my right mouse button. Then alt drag in your blocking variable. And we're going to set it to true for our key press pressed and false for our key press released. Then let's jump into our third person animation blueprint. Into the event graph, pull off your pawn owner or third person cast and get the blocking variable we just made. Pull off this and promote it to a variable and call this blocking. Now we have a blocking variable in our animation blueprint, which will change when the one in our third person blueprint does. Let's go into the anim graph. So if you haven't been following along with my tutorials so far, your animation blueprint won't look like this, but don't worry. Let's create a new state for blocking. So right click new state machine and call it blocking. If you've already got a cache connected to your default state, rename this to locomotion. But if you don't, let's create a cache to store the original animations in. So right click, new cache, call this locomotion and plug our default state into here. We need this cache so we can call upon our original animations and we can blend our shield animations in with them. Now, double click to go into your blocking state. We're going to right click, create a new state and call this blocking. Double click to open up your block state. Then let's bring in our blocking animation from the asset browser by click and dragging it. Then right click and bring in our locomotion cache we made. Now we need to blend our block animation into our locomotion movement animations. So we can do this using a layered blend per bone node. Click on the layered blend node and look in the details. We're going to blend in the block animation from the spine upwards so it doesn't affect the legs and movement. So add an array element by clicking the plus then type in spine underscore zero one as the bone name. Then we're going to put a blend depth of five. Now, because the block animation has the right arm sticking out really unnaturally, we're going to prevent the animation from having control over the arm. So add another array element, put clavicle underscore R as the bone name and minus one as the blend depth. By putting minus one as the blend depth, we're basically telling the program to not animate from the shoulder down to the arm. Now connect everything up. Before we go back, we're gonna click on our blocking animation and uncheck looping. So when the animation finishes, it will end on the last frame and hold that frame. Now let's go back into our anim graph. We need to tell the program whether we want to run our default state or our block state. So bring in a blend poses by bool node. Then control drag in our blocking variable and connect this into the bool input. Connect our blocking state into the true, then right click and bring in our locomotion cache and connect this into the false. So when we change our blocking variable to true, we'll play the blocking state and when it's false, we'll play the default state. So all we need to do now is plug this into our output pose and we're done. But for anyone who's got a similar project to me or has some slots implemented, we need to rearrange some things. So create a new cache, call this current state and plug our state result into this. As we only had one state before, 
we use this to add on our slot animations down here. Now we've got two states, we need to use whatever state is outputted to add on our slot animations. So let's swap our old locomotion cache with our new current state cache. So for our default slot, let's swap our current state cache in. For our moving blend, let's swap it in. And for our still pose, let's swap it in. Okay, animations are done. Now let's jump into our AI blueprint. And coming off our attack, for the apply damage, let's pull off the damage causer and get a reference to self. Now when the AI deals damage, it's gonna tell the person that they're attacking that they are the damage causer. Okay, let's jump into our third person blueprint. On our event damage, let's promote the damage causer to a variable, call this attacking actor. So this will get a reference to the AI when we're attacked. Now let's control drag in our block variable and press B and click to bring in a branch. Connect this up coming off the attacking actor. Coming off the false, plug this into our subtract health. So if we're not blocking, we get attacked. Then if we are blocking, we need to create a way of detecting if the player is facing the AI while he is blocking. So he's actually blocking his attacks, not just looking away from him. So let's create a function. Call this block angle check. So in my previous tutorials, I haven't really used functions as I've wanted to keep my tutorials as simple as possible. But a function is basically just a group of blueprint nodes often used to calculate things. So if you wanted to run a calculation multiple times, instead of creating all the nodes over and over again, you can just create a function and call this whenever you need it. So first, let's click on our input and add an output called facing AI. So to save some time, we're gonna copy some nodes I made for you. So click the link in the description called blueprint nodes one and paste them in here. So all these nodes are doing are getting the Z rotations of our character and whoever is attacking our character. By subtracting those values, if the player is facing the AI, the result of the subtraction is always gonna be either 150 or more or minus 150 or less. So this bool will come out true if the player is facing the AI and it will come out false if he isn't. So let's plug this into the output. Now back into the event graph. Right click and bring in our block angle check. Then bring in another branch with B and click and connect the output into the branch. So every time we call our block angle check function, all the nodes we put inside it will be run and it will give us an output. Then off the true, we can bring in a print string letting us know that we've blocked. And off the false, if we blocked facing the wrong direction, we can connect this up into our character losing health. So if we press play now, you can test this out. When we face the AI while blocking, we block, and when we're not facing him, we get hit. Now we need to send a message to the damage causer. If we block their attack, we want to stun them briefly. As when we start our game, we don't know exactly who our damage causer is, we can't use the damage causer reference to call any direct events. So what we need to do is use a blueprint interface. So jump into your content browser. So let's right click, blueprint, blueprint interface. Call this attack blocked BP. Double click to open it up and call the function attack blocked. Now go back into your third person blueprint. If we successfully blocked an attack, we're gonna call our attack blocked function we just made. So bring this in and plug it in coming off the branches true. And we want to send this event to whoever the damage causer is. So from the damage causer, plug that into the function. Now jump into your AI. Under the class settings, let's give our AI the blueprint interface. So under interfaces, click add and select attack blocked. Compile, and now we've added this, we can bring in the function event. So let me quickly explain what we just did. We wanted to send a message to our AI when our character blocked an attack. As at the start of the game, we have no clue who the damage causer will be. We have no way to call an event in the AI blueprint. So what we did was create a blueprint interface. This allowed us to call an event without having a direct reference. It allows us to call an event to whoever has the blueprint interface added in their class settings. So we added the interface to our AI. And if our AI is the damage causer, this event will now trigger. When you need to send a message to a blueprint, 
but at the start of the game, you don't know who you need to send that message to. Use a blueprint interface. Okay guys, I hope all that makes sense. Let's get back into this tutorial. So, when our player blocks this AI's attack, we want him to play a dizzy animation. So bring in a play and in montage node and select our stun short montage. Then we want to reset all his attack variables. So we can duplicate these nodes from our damage line and connect them up into our new line like so. And then we also want to reset our hit ready variable back to false. Remember this variable changes to true and false during our attack animations to stop the weapon doing damage when the character isn't attacking. But when we play an animation over the top of another one, the old animation stops running and the new one plays. This means during our attack animation, there's a chance that the hit ready gets set to true during the animation, then the animation is overwritten and the hit ready doesn't get changed back to false. So to prevent this from happening, we're flicking it back to false when the attack is blocked. Now let's create a bool variable called stunned. Let's set it to true after the attack is blocked then add a one second delay by holding D and click, and then we're gonna set it back to false again. Then move up to your attacking blueprint, and let's control drag in our stun variable, add a branch by holding B and click, then connect this in front of your AI attack. If stunned is false, we want the AI to be able to attack. If it's true, we want him to do nothing. And that is everything we need to block attacks. Now we just need to do it for the AI, so the AI can block attacks. So most of this is just a copy and paste job, but unlike our character, our AI has no key press button to trigger his blocking variable. So we need to create a way of getting our AI to randomly block. So to avoid wasting any time, I've made a few nodes for you. So check the description and copy and paste the blueprint nodes too into your program. So before I explain all this, let's right click the block variable and promote this to a variable. Then at the end of the line, we need to recall the randomly block event. So delete the node, then call random block again, and plug the lines together like they were before. Now let's copy our random block event with control C, and we're gonna go up to where our AI takes out his weapon, and we're gonna call it at the end of the line. So when our AI begins his attack, he runs his random block event. And lastly, we're gonna go up to our attack, and next to where we're setting our attacking to true, we're gonna alt drag in our blocking and set it to false so the AI can't attack and block at the same time. Okay, back to the blocking. Let's explain what we've got here. We've basically just got an event which tells our AI to block. If our AI is stood still and not stunned, he will block. Then we'll generate a random number. If it's zero, the AI will stop blocking for two seconds, then run the event again, making him block again. So this will keep repeating and blocking and with a 25% chance, stop blocking for two seconds. This may seem like a low chance to stop blocking, but remember, every time the AI attacks, he will also stop blocking. So in my opinion, this works out pretty nicely. Now let's do some copy and paste work. So first, we're gonna copy the attack blocked line, then jump into your third person blueprint. Before we paste these nodes, we need to give our character the blueprint interface as well. So go on our class settings, then add interface and add the attack block interface. Compile and then we can paste in these nodes. So the first node we need to fix is the hit ready variable. If your weapon is in your character blueprint, then you can just set this to false here. But if your weapon is in a separate blueprint, we need to do something else. You'll remember if you watched the AI attack tutorial, in our animations we made notifies to change this hit ready variable to true and false via blueprint interfaces. So we can just do the same again. So the event in our weapon which changes hit ready to false is called attack not ready. So where our hit ready variable is, let's delete it and call the attack not ready. Then let's control drag in our equipped weapon and send the attack not ready event to whatever weapon we have equipped. Now let's promote our stun to a variable. And in front of our weapon attack, let's control drag in our stun variable, press B and click to bring in a branch and only allow our character to attack if stun is false. So if the branch is false, connect it to your attack, and off the true, we do nothing. Now we need to copy over the blueprints, which check if our character is blocking facing the AI. So let's copy this line from our attacking actor to our attack blocked event. Let's jump into our AI, make some room in our take damage nodes, and paste this in. So let's convert our attacking actor to a variable, 
and plug it in coming off the damage causer. Then make sure you've got the correct blocking variable plugged into the branch and connect the false into the lower health. Unfortunately, functions don't copy over, so we need to recreate this. So we create a new function and call it block angle check. Then jump into your third person blueprint, go into the block angle check function and copy everything apart from the input. Now let's go back into our AI function and paste it all in. Connect it all up and when you're done, let's go back into the event graph, call your block angle check function and connect it up. Then put the branches false into the health reduction and connect the damage causer into our attack blocked event. So this time when our AI blocks an attack, we want our character to get stunned. But remember, the only way we get the damage causer is because it was passed through the applied damage. This is easy for the AI as we can just get a reference to self and pass that over. But for our character, our weapon is doing the damage. So jump into your weapon blueprint. We're going to get the player character. We're going to cast to our third person character and we're going to plug that into the applied damage. So when our weapon does damage, we're going to tell the program that our character is the damage causer. If your weapon is built in with your character, you can just use the self reference just like the AI. And lastly guys, we need to set up the AI animation blueprint the same way we did for the player character. All the steps are exactly the same as the character. So click the timestamp on the video and re-follow the steps but for your AI animation blueprint. To speed things up, you can copy and paste the blocking state over. Click the forward timestamp to skip back forwards when you're all set up. So guys, that is actually everything. Give yourself a big pat on the back because that was a lot of information to take in. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section if you're confused and I'll do my best to help you out. We've got one more AI tutorial to come where we'll be adding some cool effects like slow motion and other things like actually killing the AI. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Shout out to my subscribers. Shout out to my Patreons. You guys are awesome. See you all in the next video.